One of the most important aspects of doing this job is ensuring the deck of the cylinder head is completely flat. If you're having gasket problems, the test I'm about to perform will most likely lead to your answer. Before we begin, all the leftover graphite needs to be removed from the head surface. Whenever you use a composite head gasket, you'll find this all over the head and block. In another video, you saw me clean up the old 6 bolt block like this. The process is exactly the same. You just use several brand new clean razor blades, position them vertically between your fingertips, and lightly scrape off all the residue down to the bare aluminum. Change the razor blade if it gets damaged at any point. Do not use scotch bright pads on a die grinder. Don't use sandpaper. Do not use power tools of any kind unless it's a machine with a reciprocating head that removes a perfectly flat layer of aluminum across the entire cylinder head. So what we're about to cover is how to check it for flatness using a straight edge and a feeler gauge. It's really easy and there's nine measurements you have to take. You measure the diagonals between the combustion chambers and around the outside edges. If there are deep impressions from the fire rings, they need to be removed, especially if you're going to use an oversized head gasket because the block was bored over. The right way to fix a warped deck is to have it milled flat by a machine shop. Some will argue that reshaping it in an oven is a better method, and they're usually right. When you have a head straightened, you frequently still need to have it decked to wipe out the impressions left by the fire rings of the head gasket. It's also tough to find someone with the right equipment to straighten it like that, but they're right because it's possible to warp a head, have it decked, and then have it warped back again after a heat cycle. It's not common, but it's possible. The greatest risk of this occurs when the last thing the part did during failure was overheat. So here we go on the spare cylinder head and I just want you to see what it looks like if it's out of spec. A little bit of warpage there, a little bit of warpage there. If we wanted to try this with a thicker one to see how far it goes, here's the two thousandths. And this is the service limit for this particular head. If it's bigger than two thousandths, you must machine. That's the next size up. So technically this one would actually meet spec right there. And there. There. And there. So we did the other head using the smallest one in the pack and couldn't get it under at any point. This is point zero zero one five. And that one I can get under. So it's close to its service limit. These are the kinds of things you learn about a cylinder head when you're doing these kinds of tests. This one isn't perfectly flat. In this case, you wouldn't want to try to use an MLS gasket or something like that because it would wind up leaking. The surfaces have to be perfectly smooth if you're going to use the MLS. The factory composite gasket, I can attest to the fact that it holds up to 26, 27, 28 PSI with ARP head studs because I hit that regularly with the GSX. There should be two dowel pins on every DSM cylinder head. Never put a dowel pin in the teardrop. These are the parts responsible for keeping the cylinder head centered on the block. The head bolts don't center the head, they just hold it down. The dowel pins center everything. They play double duty in that they also keep the head gasket centered while you're installing it. One in this corner and one in this corner. If you don't have these installed when you put your engine together, you've got a guaranteed head gasket failure waiting to happen. 
Remember from the block series, the big holes are oil returns from the head. So this is what the head's oil returns look like. There's one you need to pay special attention to. If you ever replace this bottom center exhaust stud, you've breached the seal on an oil return gallery. Always install this stud with the bead of RTV around the threads. Always. All the rest of the holes except for one are coolant passages, and there's something you should note about those too. Most all of the slotted holes in the head are blocked off by the gasket. Do not make cutouts in your gasket for the blocked head ports. You'll find when you place it on the block that there's no provision for those holes on the block either. A few of them do pass through to a round hole. This is the oil supply passage on a 4G63. The narrow end of the teardrop is where the oil supply port from the block lines up. It's sealed by the head gasket, which adds some additional thickness to it based on the compressed thickness of your head gasket. In theory, if you correct the deck height by installing a thicker head gasket after removing material, then the teardrop should stay roughly the same depth and move roughly the same amount of oil. Oil flows through this recessed gap and up around the bolt to this hole inside the head. That hole intersects with the lower gallery port. That oil gallery is not very deep. It's drilled specifically to intersect between it and another bore from the top that goes through the head oil pressure regulator. You'd want to use this port to test the head's supplied oil pressure if you ever do that. The regulator's job is to supply the lifters with the right amount of pressure and bleed off the excess. In order for that pressure to be supplied to the lifters, you must have adequate oil volume flowing through this port. If you don't, you'll end up with poor head oil supply and noisy lifters. There's one area easily overlooked. Six bolt blocks have 12 millimeter head bolts. Seven bolt blocks have 11 millimeter head bolts. ARP head studs aren't tapered the way factory head bolts are either. If you put a seven bolt head on a six bolt block, the larger stud is blocking 3.14 square millimeters worth of oil flow inside this bore of the head. Even if you have one of the seven bolt head casts that fits with the 12 millimeter factory bolts or studs, you should never do that without boring these holes one millimeter larger because one of them is responsible for oil flow. There are two whole threads about this on DSM tuners for either people getting the head resurfaced or for people putting a 2G head on a 6 bolt. They go into much greater detail than what applies to this video. They're mandatory reading if you're rebuilding a 4G63 with any head work, head swaps, or deleted balance shafts. If you're not resurfacing your head, not swapping a 7 bolt head on a 6 bolt, and if you never had noisy lifters to begin with, then you don't need this modification. Uh, I have both of these cylinder heads lined up. The one I was running on the GSX and the spare one here. Now, I never did the oil port modification on this head. Never wallowed that out or expanded this bore. And uh, that was never done on this head either because this one was bone stock and never resurfaced still has the factory deck on it. But something I noticed that was really bizarre, I think it's this little depth gauge on the back of your micrometer and if you uh, set that to a slightly larger bore than where this oil port is and press this down in the bottom of the bore and then line that up flat on the cylinder head you get a measurement. And I got 0 .086 on my cylinder head that has been decked and so when I do the same thing on this cylinder head I get 0 .73 so I wanted to double check and make sure that this one had not been resurfaced. The factory service manual specification for cylinder head thickness is 5.2 inches. Center your calipers perpendicular to the deck so they're square, and you should get the smallest measurement you can find. You shouldn't have to squeeze them together to get it. Mitsubishi cast outcroppings on the head on both the timing and the thermostat sides for measurement. There are also other milled castings in the intake and exhaust sides of the head for this. It would be unlikely to find an uneven deck on any OE part, but on any previously machined heads, heads to be machined, or one you're about to install, you should always measure several different locations to make sure that the work is level and true. Well, it was 5.200 until I locked it. When I measure my cylinder head, see there it went back. Look at the smallest measurement you can get here. Five point one eight five. So I've had fifteen thousandths shaved from my cylinder head, yet the unmodified oil port is still deeper than this head. There are other variances in these castings. The spare cylinder head I have is a G6S casting. This G6S has the more shallow oil port. You can easily see these casting marks on the thermostat housing side of the cylinder head. What you'll notice different inside the head though is the casting in the oil galleries 
don't go all the way through the cylinder head. They just end right before reaching the outer casting on the timing side. All of the screw holes in this particular head appear to be a little bit off-centered from the casting, but still the correct distances apart for the same parts to bolt onto them. My G6K, which came from an October 94 built second generation GSX, has the deeper oil port, and those lifter oil galleries are both cast and drilled all the way through the cylinder head with plugs on both sides. The depth of the teardrop was 101 thousandths before I milled it. From a distance, if you can see the face of the timing side, literally, you know you have a G6K. You can pick it out from a distance because there's literally a face on it. Once you see it, it can't be unseen. So there's some variance in the depth of this oil port, just even from the factory. That ought to interest a lot of people. And the reason it's interesting is because a 28 thousandths of an inch variance in castings could have a dramatic effect on oil volume, especially when aftermarket fasteners are introduced. Had this G6S head been milled 20 thousandths, the oil port volume would be half of this particular G6K when it was new. I have to confess that I don't know if all G6Ks and G6Ss are like this, I'd love to know in the comments if you see the same measurements on your castings. And since I can't find a printed specification for the oil port depth, I would venture to claim that it should be between 73 and 101 thousandths of an inch, the stock depths of both of these castings. If you remove your balance shafts, blocking off oil holes and therefore raising your block's oil pressure, I would recommend the fatter side of that measurement whether or not you have lifter tick. If your short block is stock and you never had lifter tick, you should be able to get away with anything in that range. This is something to pay attention to to ensure that milling the head doesn't end up causing problems with your valve train or worse.